In this webinar, we will be going over the basics of using the treatment plan. This is designed for new users and those who want to review best practices. The following items will be covered, including treatment plan procedures in the chart module, active, inactive, and saved treatment plans, prioritizing treatment, customizing the treatment plan, creating planned appointments, entering discounts, updating fees, family and insurance remaining, creating pre-authorizations, and printing and emailing treatment plans. To get started, we're going to look here in the chart module where we can see procedures which are currently treatment planned. By default, these will show in red and also show the status of TP over here towards the middle next to the provider abbreviation. To treatment plan new procedures, you can do this a variety of ways. By default, your entry status here will be treatment planned. If you need to, you can select a tooth and over towards the right, there are several quick buttons and other shortcuts which you can use and these can be completely customized. You can also type in a specific procedure code if you know that code offhand. And lastly, you can choose the procedure list here and search through and find the specific ADA code that you're needing to treatment plan. In this case, we're going to treatment plan a series of FMX and you'll see that shows up here now in our chart module. Going into the treatment plan module itself, you'll see before we go into the treatment plan module, this pop-up comes up asking if we'd like to create a planned appointment. For right now, we're going to select no. And back in our treatment plan, we can see the procedures which we have just planned and those which were planned previously. Right now, we currently only have one active treatment plan. This is treatment which the patient needs to have done, which they have not actively declined, and that we're planning to do in the near future. If you have presented a treatment plan to a patient, what was presented can be selected here and saved by clicking Save TP. You can change the name of this. and you're going to see that shows up right here. The saved treatment plan is for historical data to indicate that something had been presented in the past and any fees that are changed in your fee schedules or anything of that nature will not be affected here in the saved treatment plan, but will be in an active treatment plan. If a patient has declined treatment, you can indicate that here by saving their treatment plan and removing that treatment from the active treatment plan. Additionally, if a patient has procedures which they would like to do in the future but can't or do not want to do them right now, you have the option for an inactive treatment plan and that can be created by selecting your procedures and clicking new TP up here at the top and you'll select and the procedures which the patient does not want to have done right now and move them over and what that will do is move that treatment from the active plan to an inactive plan to indicate the patient does not want to do that treatment at the current moment. Any treatment that is currently in an active treatment plan will show in the chart module. If there is treatment which is in an inactive plan but not an active plan it will not show in the treatment, excuse me, in the chart module by default. Same with saved treatment plans. If the treatment is not also in an active plan, only in a saved plan, it will not show here in your chart module. So again, as a quick review, active treatment plans are work that need to be done in the immediate future. Inactive plans are best for work that should be done, but it's not do being done immediately. These procedures were not shown in the chart. And saved treatment plans can denote treatment that was presented, but the treatment was declined. These plans track historical information like a snapshot in time. If you have multiple treatments that need to be completed, but they don't necessarily need to be done on the same appointment, or they do need to be split out into different appointments, 
or done in a different priority. Over here to the right, you do have priorities that can be set for treatment. And this will affect how insurance is calculated. So right now, we have this perio scaling and route planning at number one because it was the first one that was treatment planned, but this one doesn't need to be done until later. So we don't want the deductible to apply here because there will be other procedures done first. What we can do is select this extraction here, move that to priority one, and now you'll see that the deductible has reapplied. It also helpfully gives you a subtotal of all the treatment within that priority so that you have an idea of what a certain appointment fee, allowed amounts, and insurance estimates and patient portions will be if you split these by priority of appointment. Same if we do these next two procedures as priority two, you'll see an additional subtotal. The treatment plan can be customized right down here at the bottom is a treatment plan note which can be edited. This is going to edit it just for this specific patient. However, you can create a new default as well by going to setup and treatment plan. And this is the default note here. This is what will show up on every treatment plan that's printed unless it's changed on the individual level. But again, this can be changed to have a different message for the default for all plans. Over between the pre-authorization and your treatment plan list, you also have this show tab. The show tab first option here is going to affect whether or not when the tooth chart prints for the treatment plan, if it shows previously completed procedures or if it's only showing those which have been treatment planned. You can also choose whether or not you would like to show insurance maximums and deductibles in your treatment plan with your estimates. Along with your fees, you can choose whether or not you would like to see the totals for everything. So that will go ahead and take away your total for all treatment in this plan. You can also remove subtotals. If there is a discount or write-off, you can choose whether or not to show that column. In this case, there's not currently any discounts. So that column is not shown by default. And you can also choose whether or not to show insurance estimates. Any of these settings here are just going to turn that off for the rest of the session. It won't turn it off by default. Next to that show tab is our sort by tab. If you did not have anything in here by priority, then you can choose to sort by tooth or by order entered. And if you do have priorities, it will still sort by that after the priority. But priority will always be first, and then you can categorize separately by tooth or order entered, depending on what you have set here in the sort by tab. Moving on from there, if you have a patient who has procedures that they need to have done all in the same appointment, but they're not ready to schedule that quite yet, you can use the plan and appointment functionality here. So if we needed to have these two procedures done on the same appointment and we want to make sure that when it's scheduled, both of those are done, we have our priority set, but we can also create a planned appointment by clicking plan appointment right here. And we can choose the provider, hygienist, everything else, add a note, change the time frame just like you would with a normal appointment. But instead of that going on to the schedule, we'll click OK here. If we go back into the chart, you will see that here under the planned appointments tab. So it is set up, but not currently scheduled. And once it is scheduled, or when you go to schedule that appointment, you'll be able to choose it from the list of available appointments for that patient so that you can quickly schedule the appointment with the appropriate procedures and time frame. We go back to the treatment plan module. You can create discounts for procedures. These would be separate from any sort of insurance write-offs that the patient may have. To create a discount, we can do it on one or multiple procedures. To discount multiple procedures, we can select them from here and click the discount button up at the top left. 
and this will allow us to put in a percentage discount. So if we put in a 20% discount here, you can see the discount tab is now available and Open Dental applies the correct dollar discount. And when the procedures are set complete, Open Dental will automatically apply an adjustment to these procedures to discount them accordingly. In addition to the percent discount on multiple procedures, you can also double click a procedure and over here towards the bottom right, you can input a dollar discount. You can also adjust the discount if you put in a percentage. So if we don't actually want to give the whole 20%, we want to discount this by $50. We can do that from here and click OK. And now you can see the discount has updated. Up at the top of this page, we have a button that says update fees. This button is going to update any fees based off of changes made to the fee schedules associated with this patient, either to your UCR fees or the insurance allowed fees. If a change is made and the global update tool is not used, procedures still in a treatment plan will reflect the old fees. However, using this update fees button will allow you to update the fees on treatment currently planned for this one patient to the most up-to-date fees in the appropriate fee schedules. To the bottom right here, we have our family and insurance remaining bars. So if this patient has both primary and secondary insurance, it will show the total deductible, any annual max. If there is a family annual max, it will show up in this top box here. Family deductible shows right below it. And then down below, we have the individual annual max as well as deductibles. It will show the deductible remaining any insurance that's been used to date for the benefit year, anything that is pending, so procedures which have been completed and a claim has been sent out, they'll be accounted for here. And then the remaining amount is going to be the insurance used and pending uh, minus, excuse me, the annual max minus the insurance used and insurance pending. The same will be applied for secondary insurance as well if your patient has both primary and secondary insurance. And back up to the top here, right below the select patient button, we have a button for pre-authorizations. This is where you can go through and create pre-auths if you need to send them to insurance prior to completing or scheduling a procedure. So for this extraction here, we need to send a pre-auth. We'll just select that procedure click the pre-authorization button and it brings up a window that looks very similar to your edit claim window when creating a new claim. Once you have sent that off or printed it to mail it, Open Dental is going to mark it as received. So we'll click OK here and then over towards the right, you're going to see the date that this was sent, the carrier name and then the status, in this case the R means received. If it were a W, it would still be waiting to send. And an S is going to be indicating that the claim, excuse me, pre-authorization has been sent. Additionally, the pre-authorizations can also be sent from the manage module. So if you have created the pre-authorization, but have yet to send it, and you want to send it with the batch along with your claims at the end of the day, you can do so from the manage module and the send claims window. And you can see the claims as well as pre-authorizations that are still waiting to send. And you can click send e-claims just as you would with regular claims. Going back to the treatment plan module, up across the top here, we do have the option to print a treatment plan or email a treatment plan. If we click print TP here, it will automatically print that off. Email allows you to bring up an email template and send it along with any other text that you may have. And you will get a document that looks similar to this here. And you can see it has the tooth chart 
as well as the treatment that has been planned along with the insurance benefits. And this sheet can be edited and there is an additional webinar that goes over editing your sheet template as well. But this brings us to the end of our webinar. There will be additional links to related resources here in the video description. And thank you so much.